Today on Comic Story, and we're going to be seeing what the rest of the Bat Family does when Batman's unavailable. This is Comic Story, and I take comic books, I turn them into an audio drama, giving you a narrative. We cut down on the amount of panels we use, cutting out the text, and this allows you to still have something to collect and add to your collection. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today is going to be the beginning of what is known as the Arkham Tower storyline. Recently in the mainline Batman books, there was a mass explosion in Arkham Asylum. And due to that, there is no Arkham Asylum anymore. And because of this, Arkham needed a new place to function, and so they created the Arkham Tower. And that's pretty much all you need to know is we're starting the massive storyline right now, right here at Comic Storium. So let's get into Detective Comics, starting with issue 1049. With all eyes on the success of the new Arkham Tower, it has caught the attention of some that question whether the miracle medicines are what Dr. Ware and his team claim them to be. Batwoman has taken on the role of Dr. Fro to try and get close and figure out exactly what is going on. Meanwhile, Chase Meridian, a doctor placed to oversee things from the mayor's office, also has her suspicions regarding the drugs that are being given to the patients in Arkham Tower, and is trying to determine exactly what they are before reporting back to the mayor's office. As the days pass within Arkham, Dr. Meridian continues her sessions with the patients, but the more that she meets with them, she begins to notice a trend, like Anna Volson. A lot of them talk about how a show or a movie, a particularly violent one, but they can never seem to remember it or its name, just talking about a violent show or movie. Chase would tell them that she wants to continue talking about it during their session, but for now, that's it for the day. Chase would then head downstairs when she sees Batwoman in disguise as Dr. Fro, asking if it's her first day. How about a cup of coffee to get the day started? Batwoman tells her, of course, and the two sit in the cafe across the street, with Batwoman asking what is it like working at Arkham? Chase would tell her that technically she doesn't. She works for Mayor Nakano, drafting up a report on patient progress. Batwoman tells her that she heard that the enigmatic Dr. Ocean is some sort of pharma genius and he's behind the success of these miracle drugs. If she is to be working with patients like these, she'd like to make sure that the treatments are actually working. Chase tells her that her treatment does appear to be working. She just can't explain how it's working. Batwoman finishes her coffee, telling her that Ware and Arkham are lucky to have her. But her shift is about to start, and she can't be late for her first day. Chase wishes her good luck, telling her that she needs to be careful about who she goes spilling her guts to. But for Batwoman's first day, a nurse shows her around the tower's facilities, and they stop by the arts and crafts room, where many of the patients are tending to themselves, cutting shapes into pieces of paper. Batwoman asks if they're even allowed to have scissors. They're in a facility for the criminally insane. And the nurse says that they are all cleared for that. In fact, see that guy over there? That's Siphon. They even did a story on him once. Batwoman walks over to look at what they're doing, but as Siphon finishes cutting into another human figure, he asks if he can have some more paper. Batwoman thinks back to a brutal run-in she and Batman had with Siphon, and to see him so calm right now, she finds it a bit strange. But across the way, Anna stands up, stating that she'd like to go back to her room now, and a man walks up telling her that he'll take her there. Batwoman watches. She questions who is this man, and the nurse responds telling her that it's Mark and he works in maintenance. Maybe? But seeing Anna in a rather vulnerable state, Batwoman chooses to follow Mark. She insists that she'll help Anna back to her room, and while Mark argues for a little while, he gives up, telling her not to be upset. As Mark leaves, Batwoman asks Anna if she knows him, and she tells her no. But does she like movies? She sometimes likes to think about movies. Later over in Ware's office, Ware speaks to the female party crasher in charge, telling her that he's been getting complaints about one of her men. The crashers are here to retrieve product, not get involved with patients. The woman asks, what? You need me to get rid of a complainer? And Ware says, no, the complaint came from the staff. Also, Nakano's plant has seen you. We can't have you dead yet. Just keep Mark in line until Nakano signs over the $6 million check. As the party crasher leaves, Orphan reports back that it looks like there was a meeting with Ware. No product. Seems the maintenance crews are the ones moving it. Barbara tells her good work and Batwoman should be on the scene already working as a nurse. Are you there, Batwoman? A few seconds later, inside, Batwoman knocks open a vent grate, jumping down. She informs Batgirl and Orphan that she's in. Checking in on their insider now. As Batwoman opens up a door, Huntress sits up telling her that she's sorry that she hasn't called. 
but Batwoman hurries over to her, telling her that they don't need her to stay here anymore. The risk of her being inside is too high, and Huntress stops her. She informs her that she's not leaving. She feels fine. Also, a silent alarm was tripped. Batwoman needs to leave. At that moment, the alarms go off and security rushes in towards Huntress's room. Batwoman throws out a smoke bomb, and even though some of the guards are clearly members of the Party Crasher gang, Batwoman focuses on minimal fighting and escapes out the window. Once the security clears out, Huntress lays back down in the bed to go to sleep, but then feels something. The good begins to turn into rage. And it's not her rage. In the next room over, Mark stops by Anna's room asking if she's not asleep yet. Maybe they should do something to... Wait, did you take your meds? Anna turns back ready to fight asking, what meds? And suddenly, Huntress in the next cell over feels exactly what Anna is doing as she tears into Mark's flesh with her nails, all while she tries to drown out the sound of Mark's screams. As Anna is gorging out Mark's eyes, Huntress rolls around in her bed, trying to block it all out, declaring, No! Please, no! And that's when there's a flashback to when she went to take down one of Vile's parasites that had infected someone and was going on a killing spree. She did end up taking him down, but it was more brutal than normal, more ruthless. But it wasn't like she had just stopped him from doing it. It was like she was stopping herself from seeing it. Nightwing had to tell her to relax that night, and ever since she was infected by Vile, She's been acting strange. She thought it was all over, but obviously it's not. She tries to focus, but then Ware knocks on a door asking if everything's all right. He heard that she had had a bad dream. Huntress is stunned. Did I? I, I feel fine. Ware hands her some pills, telling her that she should feel fine, but just for tonight, he needs to make sure that she stays that way. Huntress nods, taking her meds as Ware steps out, closing her door, looking at the blood, stating that he needs her to stay that way so he can clean up this mess. A short while later, still covered in blood, Ware storms into Dr. Ocean's office, yelling that he had to pay off two nurses to keep them quiet. He told them that it was a bad drug reaction. The whole thing falls apart with one mistake. Their plan has to work. Dr. Roshan says that he thought that they were all asleep. All the patients should be asleep. And Ware goes on stating that now he has a dead party crasher on his hands. This is a con, not a heist. We need Nakano to sign the check. So the next night, Nightwing gets ready for his shift as a janitor in Arkham Tower so that he can try and get Huntress out. She wasn't originally supposed to be doing this, but she opted herself to submit herself as a patient in Arkham to see exactly what is going on. But the fact that she did this is kind of strange. Normally, he would have contested to having a person on the inside being subjected to the drugs, that it would be too dangerous. But part of him thought maybe she's doing this not just to take down the bad guys, but maybe get some help. Was that why he just let her go into Arkham? Nightwing moves closer to Huntress's room, but before he could even open the door, a voice calls out, Shh, they're sleeping. Her and Anna are sleeping. Nightwing looks back to see Mr. Freeze. Oh, uh, okay, thanks. I was gonna take out the trash. Freeze smiles, telling him no problem. You have a good night. As Nightwing looks down, he sees some of the blood that Ware missed, collecting it. Meanwhile, in Ware's office, Ware sits on the phone with Nakano telling him yes. He understands that they need Dr. Meridian's report. And he's really excited to move forward. Thank you, Mayor Nakano. But then a gun is pointed at Ware, and a party crasher shouts asking, Where is Mark? Where is my brother? Ware looks straight at him. Puri, your brother is... And then a voice tells Puri to stop. He feels happy. He will leave happy and relieved. So, Puri drops his gun. He smiles. Okay, goodbye. Ware takes a deep breath. Thank you for that, Roger. And it's Psycho Pirate who responds to him. You're welcome, Toby. Later that night, Ware takes a trip down to Gotham's underground, stating that he didn't know that there was a whole city down here. The female party crasher from before tells him that they are not here to talk about Gotham's history, that he is here to explain why half of these pills are duds. Toby tells him that it's fine, just some issues with distribution is all. He'll get it all taken care of. The party crasher says that she also heard that he was selling to Penguin as well. He wouldn't happen to be double dipping, would he? And Ware laughs. <laughs> of course not, I work for you. I'll fix it, don't worry. 
But as soon as Ware leaves, he gets a call, and when he answers it, Penguin tells him. It appears that our shipment of numb contained ineffective product. You have 24 hours to fix it, or everyone that you know will wash up on the docks as chum. Ware tells the Penguin. Of course, no problem. Just uh, give me a little bit to get things taken care of. He hangs up, and then he calls Chase Meridian. And when she answers, he says, Oh, hey, I'm glad I got a hold of you. She tells him that she's glad that he called. She had a few questions about the medications that some of the patients are on, and she was hoping to talk to Dr. Ocean or... Ware says that he'll get her in touch with him as soon as he gets back to the city. But, uh, perhaps we can talk about your report. See if there's any way to speed things up. We kind of need that money from Marinacano. Chase tells him, unfortunately, she cannot submit her report until she speaks with Dr. Ocean. And Ware says, right, okay, well, thank you, Chase. And he hangs up. As he gets back to Arkham Tower, he rushes up to Dr. Ocean's office, where Psycho Pirate is hiding under his desk with dozens of energy drinks and caffeine pills laying scattered about. As he sees Ware, he begins to snap. No, you can't. Adding more people isn't that simple. It's like an interlocking delicate web of emotions and... Ware shouts that he doesn't care. Nakano is supposed to come by and see the progress. We have no choice. Don't mess this up. Just then, the front desk calls Ware, telling him that the mayor is finally at Arkham Tower to see him. Psycho Pirate sits back up in his desk, telling the staff that they are happy, they are excited, and they feel good. As the meeting concludes, Ware calls in, telling him that he did it. Nakano is going to sign the check over as soon as the new patients arrive. Just a few more days and we are done. But as the morning continues, Psycho Pirate begins to feel the effects of having stayed up day and night, fueled by only caffeine and he crashes. As he falls out of his chair, the moment that he does, the patients all regain their violent urges. Down in the cafeteria, a nurse notices Siphon standing back up asking if he's okay. Without answering, Siphon turns back, slamming his spoon into the nurse's shoulder. As the alarms go off, Nightwing rushes down to see what is happening and finds that all of the patients are now fighting. But before he can try and stop things, he's cracked in the back of the head by a tray by Anna Volson who says that she remembers the baby bat. Do you remember me? Up on the higher floors, Chase has her session with Huntress as the sirens begin to blare, and Huntress jumps up yelling to call Dr. Flo and tell her what is happening. Chase asks, Dr. Flo? But why? She's new. Wait, where are you going? Huntress runs out of the office, stopping to look over her shoulder, asking, Do you know him? And Nero walks towards her with a bone saw, telling her that he's about to cut off the head of the descent. Baron Meridian. Huntress runs forward, kicking off the wall, telling her, Nope, didn't miss this at all. She delivers a few punches to the face, with Huntress lifting her leg up and slamming Nero's head into the wall with her foot. As Nero slumps over, she looks at the blood on her hands. She says to herself that she remembers. She has to remember this. Moments later, Ware bursts into Dr. Ocean's office, shouting, Damn it! And Psycho Pirate begins to wake up. What? What did I do? Ware grabs Shakeup. Stop them! Stop them! Make them stop! The psycho Pirate yells back, Okay! I will! Just sleep! You'll all sleep! Back in the cafeteria, Nightwing is fighting Anna when suddenly, everyone collapses, falling asleep to the ground. And there is the conclusion that we're going to be leaving this one off on. Now, Arkham Tower is issues 1049 to 1058 of Detective Comics, and I'm pretty sure there's a couple annuals and other spinoffs in this as well. It's a big crossover event featuring multiple writers telling you the stories of Nightwing, Batwoman, Orphan, all the characters that aren't Batman, and how they're handling a big event that Batman is not a part of. But because it's so large, I need to break it up. So make sure you come back next Sunday for the next part of Arkham Tower. It has three to four parts that we're going to be bringing you, and I hope you guys are excited to see a little bit of the behind the scenes as to what is going on in the world of Gotham. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join us over on Patreon, where you can get early access to a lot of our stuff that we create here. And on that note, I will see you guys next week for more Arkham Tower.